citizens be more concerned than ever before about crime in our country now that prominent people are being targeted and robbed at gunpoint. Just a few days ago, the transport minister, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, and her bodyguards were attacked and robbed of their belongings on the N3 highway. Now, if it can happen to a protected cabinet minister, then what chance do ordinary South Africans have? And what are the kinds of questions we should be asking after this incident? For more on this, I'm joined now by Senior Training Coordinator at the Institute for Security Studies, Velem Els. Velem, good afternoon. Welcome to today, and thank you very much for your time. I mean, we've known for a long time now that crime in our country is really getting bad, especially certain categories of crime. No matter what the statistics say, we still have very high rate of murders in our country, as an example. And also, just a couple of months ago, we saw a spike in cash in transit heights. Now, should we as citizens really be concerned about the crime, especially now that we're seeing a government minister being robbed at gunpoint on a national highway? Uh, good afternoon to you. Yes, uh, you know, and we're not even in the in the Christmas period. Uh, that is no where you normally see the spikes in these type of, of incidents. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't think there's anyone in South Africa that has not been affected by by crime in some way or the other in South Africa. Even though the statistics uh, are very high, as you said, it's uh, we have a, a, an average of about three murders per hour today in South Africa. Uh, that is uh, high in, 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 in any standard, and that put us uh, in the higher echelons in, in the world. If you look at our, uh, our uh, crime index in South Africa, the International Crime Index, it, it, it puts South Africa at number seven in the world. So that is extremely high for, uh, for us, yeah. Yeah, uh, just on this incident, I mean, uh, I know it could be speculation, but I mean, what kind of questions we should be asking, Velem, could there be more to this incident than what we are being told, uh, uh, than what has been reported? We, we don't know. There's not a lot of uh, information uh, available about that. We can speculate, as, as you just mentioned. So uh, we look at the hour of the day that, uh, that that happened. It was in the early hours of the morning, and that is normally the time when these, uh, these gangs operate in the other areas of South Africa where they are also uh, uh, active. Uh, and we see that uh, they uh, they formed a normal strategy or modus operandi that they normally do, where they put out these spikes in the road, uh, wherever the, the, the vehicle stop, they strategically place himself, a firearms ready, and then they accost the driver and his passengers. And uh, what happened, this, uh, this is the same that happened with the minister, and uh, also her bodyguards were then caught off guard, and uh, they were also robbed of their firearms. Yeah, so they could have been targeting anybody. It could have been any, any, anybody. I mean, uh, I have friends that, uh, that have, uh, have suffered the same consequences on the N4. So, uh, so it, it is happening everywhere. The problem is we have to look at how long has that been persisting and, and why is nothing being done to that? Because this is really very dangerous, uh, especially if you've, got, if you've got families in your car and your small children in the car. Uh, that, uh, that is something that cannot just be left to, to, to the statistics. It's something that needs to be addressed. You know, this question has been asked uh, by my other colleagues since this incident was reported. Are we wasting money for VIP protection if it's still possible that such an incident can happen to a cabinet minister? Indeed, you know, I think the, the, the VIP unit came on the spotlight uh, with the so-called blue light incident of earlier this year and, uh, and also the amount of money that is being spent. Uh, to protect these people. Uh, we don't know what the SS standard operating procedure of these people are, and if, if, if there is one, they will not uh, disclose it to us. But common sense would, uh, would, would, would uh, tell you that whenever you come in an incident like that and you, two, you are two, uh, two bodyguards, one will, will take care of security while the other one will then uh, uh, take care of, of fixing the wheel. But we don't know what happened there. As you said, we are speculating. Uh, that is, that is uh, really, uh, it's, it's troublesome. It is really something to worry uh, for a minister in this, uh, this climate 
to travel at that uh, at hour of the night on a, on a, on a on a route that is targeted by these type of incidents uh, with only two bodyguards in one vehicle or two vehicles we don't know how many vehicles were there uh, that, then that that just uh, tells us a story that you know we don't have the 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 luxury of of having bodyguards or or, or more vehicles in a convoy to protect us and that is what the south african the only south africans are being exposed to on a on a daily basis you know what, Valem, I was thinking as you're talking that it would be unfair of anybody to expect the bodyguards to, to be like super, supermen or some superheroes of stuff. But are they sufficiently trained to handle such a situation? Uh, what we know and what we uh, we have experienced uh, in in the past, these these uh, bodyguards they go through uh, vigorous selection, and uh, uh, and and after that selection, they are uh, actually uh, very well trained. They are very good uh, shots. They they supposed to be to, to to you know, and they're regularly updated and tested. They are also. Uh, uh, trained in in in, uh, in high speed driving and defensive driving and all of those things, so they undergo a very uh, a series of courses uh, before they are then actually uh, allowed to be part of of, of, of these contingents. Uh, what we we also would like to see is that they focus more on all uh, and especially the intelligence side of it. You know, whenever you plan a, 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 a trip, you have to do it in advance. You can't just jump in the vehicle and, and drive mm -hmm. off with a, a principal or a, a, a minister uh, to, in any direction. If you don't have a, a fair amount of intelligence off the route, you didn't do your planning off the route and, and identify hotspots and then uh, prepare some contingencies. So should something go wrong, that should all be in your plan before you depart. Yeah, I mean, uh, from your research at the ISS, uh, I, I mean, can we say South Africa has got a crime scourge and, 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 and that this is really a, a difficult one for us to solve? We don't seem, in, don't seem to be having a solution. The, min, the Minister of, um, of Police announcing more cops being trained. The President saying there's 10,000 more boots on the ground and there'll be special units to help fight uh, illegal mining until April. It's like knee-jerk reaction stuff. Or am I being unfair? I don't think you're unfair. I think what we also should look at, we should not just look at a, a, a reactive uh, a strategy to 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 go up this. We should look at a more holistic uh, strategy where where we we plan and where we bring in uh, more role players. Because one of, one of the challenges that we are facing is a is a is a society that became extremely violent. We've got a society that uh, that where where criminality is, is 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 sort of accepted. You know, these criminals live amongst us. Uh, they hide amongst us, and and if we don't have the trust in the police to to, to inform the police about that, this, this criminality is going to be with us uh, for a very long time. Doesn't matter how many boots we put on the ground. Yeah. Just to conclude, you said you know some people who've also suffered a similar fate, like the Minister of Transport, where they they had these nails thrown or spikes on the highway, and then they got uh, they got they got robbed. Is this becoming common from what you are hearing, uh, Vellum? And should we be worried? You know, I, I live in the Pretoria area, and especially on the N4, there have been various incidents. Uh, 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 and 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 that is also where my 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 friends uh, suffered the same fate. And that is not something that happens once every three or four months. That's something that occurs quite regularly. So, for instance, when I travel in that direction at night, I will not use uh, the N4. I will I will I will make use of an alternative route because of the the, the inherent dangers of of uh, of the gangs operating there. But the problem is, you know, that is out in the open. But we don't manage to see any arrests. We don't see any prosecution of those people, and and that 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 cause that they just become more and more brazen uh, in what they do and they expand their operate, operations. Yeah, and and thankfully, in an ironical way, because it's a high-profile case involving a cabinet minister, we are now becoming aware of the dangers. You're talking about the N4 highway, another very important uh, national highway, and this happened on the N3. Maybe we say, thankfully, now we are becoming aware to take care not to drive at night on these highways, especially the N4 and the N3. Thank you very much, Velem Els, from the ISS Institute for Security Studies. More news.